What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today behind me, we have a Tesla prefabricated supercharger unit, version three supercharger site. And this is one of two that we'll actually be visiting today. And I'll be giving you a full tour of everything that's going on at the site. So as I mentioned, this is a prefabricated Tesla supercharger site. Uh, if you saw my previous video comparing Electrify America, Rivian, Tesla, uh, and a couple others, you saw a kind of a deep dive on Tesla's version two versus, versus version three supercharger architecture and some of the benefits of both of them uh, and some of the improvements that Tesla made going from version two to version three. If you haven't already, definitely recommend checking that video out first. That way you'll have kind of a working knowledge of the basics of DC fast charging, kind of what others are doing and why this is so important and why it's making a difference essentially. Uh, definitely thank you guys for watching that video. That video did way better than I ever expected it to for being such a nerdy video. But this is a 12 stall version three supercharger and let me just start giving you a tour of what we have going on here. So the basics of what we have going on at the site are pretty simple I would say. We have a 1000 kVA utility transformer over here. Let me show you that. And this is from Duke Energy because we're in Mooresville, North Carolina. So 1000 kVA you can see right there. Incoming primary voltage is 7.2 kV and we have a 480, 277 secondary voltage. Pretty typical for DC fast charging sites. We then have a 12 stall version three Tesla supercharger. And version three means that these can actually output up to 250 kilowatts at each stall. However, each cabinet is not 200 or is not a thousand kilowatts, which would be implied by having four uh, pedestals or posts, as Tesla call them, uh, per each cabinet. And in case you're not familiar and you just need a basics on Tesla superchargers, with the version three supercharger architecture, you actually have four posts per one cabinet. And typically the cabinets are kind of all next to each other and then you have a row of posts or some islands or whatever the site configuration is. But what we're talking about specifically today is actually these prefabricated supercharger units. So if you'll notice here, you have the cabinet and you have all these posts on one piece of concrete. And this was actually not made here on site. It was shipped in on a truck and then craned in to allow for a lot faster installation and actually having this entire unit as a UL listed or NRTL uh, evaluated unit. And you actually have all the conduits in there. You have wireways for the DC buses and you actually have an integrated mini switch gear of sorts on the side of it. So let me show you the entire power flow. So as I mentioned, we have the utility transformer here directly out of this utility transformer you actually have two four inch conduits going to each one of these uh prefabricated supercharger units and the reason for that is these cabinets they're actually only about 350 kilowatts so you can see they're 350 kva which with the near 1.0 power factor is essentially 350 kilowatts roughly but there's also a dc bus so these can actually take in and out 575 kilowatts per cabinet up to. Uh, you'd actually have to have two cabinets feeding one cabinet uh, in order to have that 575 kilowatt input. But on a Tesla supercharger version three site, for every three cabinets, you actually have one that's designated what Tesla calls their star center cabinet. And that's the unit that is designated as the site controller and actually contains the site controller, which is right in here. So. I looked at the plans for this. You can actually see the little cellular um, antenna there as well. And from the transformer, like I mentioned, you have two four inch conduits going to each one of these. So those are your only conduits for power. And then it's actually going into this box here. There's a couple different variations, but they're all 600 amp, 480, 277 rated disconnects inside this cabinet. It's kind of like a mini switch gear if you watch my previous video. Uh, actually made by the same company, Lincoln Electric Products, uh, in many cases, but not all cases. And then down here, you can see these smaller conduits. So each one of these has one going into the cabinet, but this one actually has conduits going out of it as well, because this 
cabinet right here is controlling the other two cabinets and allowing that movement of power between them, uh, which is kind of the magic of the version three supercharger system. Right here, you can see Tesla's actual wireway, and this is a specifically specced component of the installations that allows them to run that DC bus between each one of these. There's actually holes in the concrete for the wires to run through. And now that I give you a walkthrough of this specific site in Mooresville, North Carolina, we're actually going to head to another site in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. That site has a little bit more going on to add it, and it actually has level two charging as well. So I'll show you how they integrate that with this entire system, being that you don't have a switch gear in the traditional sense. And then towards the end of the video, we'll wrap it all up. I'll talk through some of the pros and cons of this system uh, and whether it makes sense for CCS network operators to actually do a similar system uh, or if it's really only something that Tesla can do. Well, guys, we made it to Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My Rivian is actually plugged in on the level two there. That'll be a separate video that'll either go up before or after this video. So definitely, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you're notified when that comes out. But let me give you a tour of this site. This one's a little bit different than the one we were at previously. Uh, has some pretty unique characteristics and also has the added uh, layer or complexity of sorts of having that level two aspect going on here. So let me get to it. So here we have the utility transformer, again from Duke Energy. They basically run all the power in North and South Carolina. You can see that there. We have a thousand KVA transformer here. Uh, again, 7.2 KV primary voltage, 480-277 secondary. Looks like this bollard uh, has already been impacted somehow. Pretty impressive. That's That was hit pretty hard, it seems. Uh, that transformer is actually pretty oversized for what we have installed here as far as the load. Uh, so what I suspect is going on here is that they're going to be installing additional hardware down there. But let's talk about how it's coming out of this transformer. So we have the transformer. Right here we have a level 2 cabinet. We'll get to that in just a moment. But we have the conduits going to each one of these PSU units. And there are three of them at this site. And what's interesting is that if you were to put all three of these in a row, it would be this one, this one, and then that one, which is why this unit here is actually the site controller uh, star center cabinet. And again, you can tell because you have the controller right here. And interestingly, that's not locked. So that's something Tesla should probably do there. Um, we again have the same mounted units here. We also have an additional label from Duke Energy here with the transformer size and the fault current which I thought was pretty interesting. But another cool thing here is that here they're actually using a different connection method between the cab or between the uh, units. So because this unit isn't over there, uh, they actually had to do a rear output for the DC bus between this cabinet and this cabinet. So we've got this going down, probably over and then turning that way basically and connecting here and then between this unit and this unit because again this one is star center we have a dc bus going here as well so we also have of course the conduits as i mentioned from the transformer to each one of these as their feed you can see there and then we'll go back to the star center cabinet as well so here you can see the additional uh outputs for the site controller aspect. As I mentioned, we do have the additional complexity here of having a level two unit. And if you watch my previous infrastructure deep dive with the Rivian and everything comparison, this will look a little bit familiar to you because this is actually the exact same thing that Rivian is using at their Charlotte Adventure Network site. And this is essentially a step down transformer and 240, 120 volt, uh, panel board and what that allows is that because the site is 480 volt 277 volt you actually have to step it down in order to do level two charging like on these bases here but what is also smart is that rather than stepping down 480 277 to 208 120 three phase they're actually going to 240 120 single or split phase which allows the charging to be a bit more efficient i'll show you that here 
So Tesla wall connectors are 48 amps. Let's see if the truck actually wants to unlock. There we go. And we're getting the full 48 amps there, as you can see with the 11 kilowatts. Let's go to the charging screen in my Rivian. And you can see there, 48 amps. And we've been charging for a little bit there, gotten four kilowatt hour, not bad at all. And then we do actually have this signage for how to charge your non-Tesla. And again, I'll be making a separate video about that in just a moment here. But it is rather surprising to me that they wouldn't have arranged this in a way to have the two level twos right next to each other. Seems a little silly to have a level two here and then a level two all the way down there and split them up and have to run the conduits a bit of a distance. Obviously the conduits for level two are pretty small in the grand scheme of things for this site, but still you don't want to have to be doing longer conduit runs or more complex conduit runs that are necessary. And let me just show you this. So this is what the Tesla J1772 handle looks like on a Gen 3 wall connector. And it does clip on there just like that. Well, and as we wrap up this supercharger video, uh, I did want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of doing a prefabricated installation like this, uh, especially as there are some new companies like DC Americas and quite a few others that are doing these prefabricated units for CCS installations. Uh, I think that there is some value to having these prefabricated units. However, not in the regard that a lot of these companies are trying to claim. Uh, with CCS vehicles, you actually have a lot more challenges with cord lengths, uh, cable positioning, things like that, being that the charge ports aren't all in the same position like they are for Teslas. Uh, in addition, you're not really saving a ton of work in regards to the utility connection. Uh, which is kind of the claim to fame that a lot of these will make. If there's a battery system on board, that's a different story, and you could actually be reducing your utility connection uh, if you're able to tap into an existing service, potentially, especially if you're able to then also do a full site meter of sorts to then regulate how much power is available to charge that battery. Uh, but I think for Tesla, the main benefit is that they can have all the things on one unit uh, and reduce the skill that is needed on site for the installation, essentially reduce the risk of things going wrong, uh, as well as standardize even beyond what they already have, uh, their installations, the parts that are needed for repairs, things like that. I mean, they're standardizing it all the way down to the bollards that are in place. So if someone hits it, they know exactly what bollards in place because it's the same in all of these PSU installs. Uh, especially with Tesla's architecture, it makes a lot of sense that they're typically doing two to three cabinet or installation units, uh, the prefabricated supercharger units, having the provisions for the DC bus already makes a lot of sense, I think. Um, it gets a little bit tricky, but it's also easier for Tesla because all the charge ports are in the same location. Uh, so they have pretty short cables. They can have it in the same position between or behind parking stalls in pretty much every case. Uh, and they have the ability to just control the entire site from on one unit. They know exactly what their future holds, essentially. Uh, they don't need to be planning for future proofing, though I think they could just add another cabinet behind it potentially somehow. I don't know. I'd love to hear what you guys think of these prefabricated supercharger unit installations. Uh, I think there is a lot of benefit in the initial install, but there's also some cons, as I mentioned. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one.